begging him to give me a means of doing something towards gaining some soul for his service. I greatly envied those who out of love for our Lord could devote themselves to this, even if it meant their dying a thousand times. Following the footsteps, St. Teresa of Avila, Father Leander of the Annunciations, the first Carmelite missionary in India came to Goa in 1619 for the expansion of the discalced Carmelite order. And he built a beautiful Carmelite church in Old Goa dedicated to the Mother of God. And there lived a Carmelite community consisted of Genovese, Milanese, Neapolitans. French and Spanish and also Portuguese. The eminent theologian Father Philip of the Trinity was at one time prior of the Goa community. Another extraordinary Frenchman was the sailor Pierre Berthelot, who had gained a position of high command in the Portuguese Navy. He experienced the grace of conversion and presented himself before Father Philip requesting admission into the Carmelite order. After his ordination, the Portuguese authorities earnestly requested his services for a mission to Sumatra because of his knowledge of the sea route. So Pierre Berthelot, now known as Father Dionysius of the Nativity, left Goa for Ache in the company of a known clerical brother, Brother Redemptious of the Crows, in 1638, never to return. They were detained and martyred in Sumatra. They were beatified in 1900 by Pope Leo XIII and are considered the proto martyrs of the discalced Carmelite order. The Portuguese authorities, especially after Portugal won its independence from Spain in 1640, wanted the Carmelites to an oath of obedience to the Archbishop of Goa and the civil government. This the Carmelites refused to do, especially after the congregation of the propaganda was set up in 1622. Eventually, the Carmelites had to leave Goa under threat of arrest in 1709. Under the courageous leadership Father John Baptist Mary of the Multedi family, they requested shelter from the English factory at Sunkheri, not far from today's Kavar. They wanted to remain loyal to the propaganda, while the Portuguese clung to their Padroado privileges. Since the Portuguese objected to propaganda, the creation of bishoprics. The propaganda created apostolic vigariae, some of which were entrusted to the Carmelites. The apostolic vigariate of the Great Mogul was created in 1696 and Father Peter Paul of St. Francis. A Carmelite was appointed vigar apostolic. A little later, the vigariate apostolic of Verapoli was created and entrusted to the Carmelites for three centuries. Meanwhile, the English in Bombay were watching the vicissitudes of the Carmelites in Goa, while they themselves were having trouble with the Portuguese clergy in Bombay. Intending to expel the Portuguese from Bombay, they invited the Carmelites from Sunkeri to take over the ministry to the Catholics in Bombay assigning them six churches. The Holy See tolerated the situation and the Vicariate Apostolic of the Great Mughal was transmuted to that of Bombay. 
The Carmelites served in Bombay from 1720 to 1848 in the face of constant conflicts with the Padroado. Their jurisdiction reaches as far as Sunkeri, Kurg, and Shirwa in South Canara. The Vicariates Apostolic of Quillan and Manglore were created in 1845 and entrusted to the Carmelites. All this time, no Indian native Carmelites were allowed into what was called the First Order of Discalced Carmelites. Those who wished to share in the Marian and Theresian charisms of the Order were allowed to group themselves into what could become into tertiary congregations. Such had been the Shimbel Tertiary Congregation, which had rendered invaluable service to the Carmelite Vicar Apostolic of Bombay, especially in the 18th century. Particularly after the suppression of the Jesuits in 1773. Unfortunately, these tertiaries also became extinct when Portugal banned all religious orders from its domains in 1834. With the support and encouragement of the Vikas Apostolic, a few tertiary congregations developed in Varapoli. Thus, for the Siro Malabar Rite, a TOCD congregation was founded in Manana. Parallelly, for the Latin Rite, Archbishop Bacinelli founded a monastery in Kunamau in 1857. And as a continuation of its development, he founded another big imposing monastery in Manumel in 1866. And this was completed by his successor, Archbishop Leonardo de Melano. The Teocidi of Mananam later developed into CMIs, and Teocidi Manumel became the province of the First Order, so OCD Manumel province. At the end of the 19th century, the energetic and saintly Father Aloysius Benziger was sent to India and became professor at Putanpalli. He was selected as personal secretary by the papal delegate Monsignor Selaski and got the chance of seeing for himself how well Indians were faring as religious in European congregations. Even before Benziger became the Bishop of Kailong, he conceived the idea of opening the doors of the First Order to Indian natives. He put this idea powerfully across to the General Superior and to his Belgian province. Thanks to his insistence, finally, a house of regular observance was established at Cotton Hill Trivandrum, and the way was paved for the admission and training of Indian novices. Later, Cotton Hill was renamed Carmel Hill. Around the same time, the Spanish missionaries of the Navarra province, who had taken over the Archdiocese of Verapoli, opened a house of observance in Ernakulam. In 1929, the first batch of Indian novices made their first profession. It was Bishop Benziger also who conceived the idea of renewing Carmelite presence in Goa in the third centenary of the martyrdom of blessed Dionysius and Redemptus. The Magao community dates its foundation from that year. In 1947, the Malabar province was set up as a semi-province. The same year saw the foundation of the Mangalore community. The TOCDs of Manumel, under the leadership of their prior general, Father Cyril Bernard Papalil, 
initiated the process of getting amalgamated to the first order OCD in 1957. And this request was immediately accepted and it was declared a general delegation of the order. And soon the community at Mangalore was added to the general delegation. In 1964 it became a semi-province and 1967 a full-fledged province. And this province took the responsibility for promoting the regional vocations from Karnataka and also their formation. And later, Manjumal province initiated the vocation promotion and formation of the candidates to the order from Tamil Nadu state. Both Malabar and Manjumal became full-fledged provinces in 1967. Very soon, both these provinces became strong enough to take up their own missions. In 1972, Manjimal province undertook Andhra mission. Andhra mission became a regional vicariate in 1989. Later, it was raised to the status of commissariate in 2005. And finally, in 2011, became a full-fledged province. In 1979, Malabar province undertook the Punjab mission. This became a regional vicariate in 1994. In 2004, it was raised to the status of commissariate. And finally, in 2010, it became a full-fledged province with the name OCD Delhi province. That very year, also the discourse Carmelite -like communities in Tamil Nadu pertaining till them to the Madhavar and Manjumal provinces were separated from the mother provinces and united to form a general delegation with a view to the formation of a new province of Tamil Nadu. This became a commissary in the year 1990 and pro province in the year 1992. In 1981, the Margao, the Manglo, and the Mysore foundations were sliced off to form Karnataka Goa province. That same year, it appeared that the Latin religious of the Malwa province should group themselves into a separate new unit known as the Varapuli unit which became a general delegation in 1987 and a commissariate in 1996 in view of the formation of the South Kerala province in 2001. By 1998, the unit is strong enough to undertake a mission in Northeast and West Bengal. The presence of Kamal in India dates back to 1619. However, the real implantation and expansion of the order in India took place only in the 20th century. At present, the Indian Kamal is blessed with seven provinces. We have altogether 881 priests, 23 non-clerical brothers, 43 solemnly professed members and 300 simple professed members. The garden of the Kamal in India is flourishing with 46 novices 122 theology students, 155 philosophy students, 31 regency, 82 postulants, and 212 aspirants. The ardent desire of Saint Teresa of Avila to have new foundations all over the world is being fulfilled by Indian Kamal. And we have all the reasons to be grateful to Almighty God for the establishment of 136 erected houses and 77 non-erected houses. We have 22 spirituality centers, 5 print presses, 6 bookstalls, 5 publishing houses and 96 parishes throughout India to spread the fragrance of the Carmelite spirituality. For the upliftment of the downtrodden, we have 42 schools, 22 social work centers, 15 hostels for poor boys and 7 hostels for poor girls. 
the seven provinces all together take care of 27 cloister convents by giving them spiritual nourishment. We have 113 secular Kamal units consisting of 6,788 members approximately. And we also have started the Kamal Youth Wings to impart our charism to the youth. The Indian Kamal not only enjoys the number of its members, but also the good quality is proved in the generosity with which they have undertaken missions and missionary works in India and abroad. Drawing upon the Saint Teresa's passion for evangelization and salvation of the souls, Kamal in India flourishes as a great hope for the order in India as well as in abroad. In India, our missionaries are working in Odisha, Ranchi, Chhattisgarh, Bhopal, North Malabar, West Bengal and Northeast and in abroad, Tanzania, Zambia and Sri Lanka. Following the footsteps of our Carmelite missionaries like Redemptus and Dennis who lived their passion in heroic manner, Carmel in India bore witness to its contemplative and missionary charism as true sons and daughters of the church. With folded hands, we thank the good Lord, Our Lady of Mount Carmel and Saint Joseph for the wonders he worked for the Carmel in India. Yes, so love.